Okay, so first I'm going to turn on the power supply over here and then turn on the microscope itself. I've already turned on the uh, fluorescent excitation source over here. Um, it takes about five to ten minutes to warm up in order to get the, the best visual of our GFP fluorescence that we're going to be looking for. And while the microscope is warming up, I'm going to go over here to the computer. So we use a program called Velocity to do our microscope imaging. Um, get the program ready and also prepare my slides. Check on my first sample. I've got three samples where uh, I've attempted to mix all the cells together here. Um, so I'm going to lay out a clean spot here and grab my slide. And then I will grab my pipette tip here and uh, prepare the slide. Now, this tube's a little long, so I'll probably just have to wipe down the pipette with ethanol, make sure I don't cross-contaminate anything later. But now, This is uh, an aliquot from the, the main culture that I've drawn in order to not contaminate it in this process. So I'm only drawing from a small sample here. Um, since I'm clearly not using sterile technique, no flame or anything. Placing my slide here on the microscope, got it locked in. So I'm going to need to hit the lights here. In order to distinguish the successful cells, which will be expressing green fluorescent protein, I'm going to go to my little interface, and, and along the bottom here I've got my lighting options, basically. Um, so we're over here on bright field, which is you know, standard viewing, and I'm going to switch over to dark field which will change us over to the other bulb. And then, um, so that basically turns completely dark until I change the shutters here, which will redirect the, the light source. So I'm gonna just swap these shutters, um, which is basically um, sending different wavelengths of light. And then we get the filter set on the microscope um, will filter out everything except for that, which will excite the GFP and it will Anything expressing GFP will show up bright green on here and everything else won't. So we'll really be able to, by switching from bright field to dark field, we'll really be able to show the contrast between um, those su successful transformants and the, the cells that are not transformed because they won't glow. And nothing showing up there. I'm gonna switch over to chlorophyll. And of course, since these are photosynthetic organisms, um, they will show up nice and brightly under the, the chlorophyll filter, and I'll try to get that on the video for you here. Put some on the camera and the video again there. Okay, great, so that's still calibrated about the same. The weird thing is the focus is a little bit different on the camera than it is on the microscope itself, so trying to get a clearer, there we go, there's a clearer picture on the screen. Um, so that's looking really good. Switching back over to the GFP filter, number two here. Um, and on the video screen you can kind of see that background fluorescence um, but let's move around and see if I can find any see if there's any oh there we go that just might eh? oh, yeah. it's a little brighter oh it's showing up on the screen nicely actually it's showing up better on there I think because I've got the, the filter open for the camera but that looks like what I want right there um, Try to focus that in the camera better. This is, this is actually a really, really um, great demonstration here um, that makes me pretty confident it's working. Uh, you can see, actually, if you look at these blobs here, there's some faint green showing up. And that's the, the background fluorescence that um, it just comes naturally to, to these organisms under the GFP filter here. Um, but there's clearly this, this long filament in the middle um, that is, you know, showing up much brighter than the others. And so that's, that's the one I'm looking at here. Uh, of course, you know, it's primarily, you know, un untransformed anabina, just kind of the wild type strain. Um, but what we can do now is uh, take samples from this culture um, where I'm seeing the, the success and actually um, select for those. Uh, on a plate, and then, um, you know, anabina, it's, it's slow growing, but just like E. coli or bacillus, it will grow 
colonies on a plate. And then um, once those green colonies form, you know, I, I can pick one of those and I'll have a monoclonal strain. I can actually, um, the, the, the DNA piece, the plasmid that we've put this green fluorescent protein part on, the plasmid itself contains uh, antibiotic resistance genes. So these organisms that are glowing will also be, uh, well, they're moving around a little bit, will also be um, resistant to uh, neomycin, which is an antibiotic that would normally kill uh, anabina. Great. Um, so about to try to inoculate from uh, one of those, one of the anabina colonies that we've selected for on the plate. So I'm just setting up my bench space here. Um, definitely want to do this st with sterile technique um, since we're trying to get this culture started. Uh, one benefit we've got is that BG11, which is the, the medium that anabina grows in, is uh, very, you know, lacks m most nutrients that other things would need to grow. But it's still uh, better to practice sterile technique when doing something like this. So I'm going to start by um, just culturing in a small culture tube because uh, if we try to grow too much too fast, um, then it'll be much harder for the, the anabina to grow. I'll go ahead and get the Bunsen burner going here. Put that down. I'm going to actually need to put some media in here, so I'm going to go over to the fridge quick and see if I can find some BG11. Um, so I should have, great, I've got, so I've got a small aliquot here of BG11, which is perfect because I only want a little bit for now. Once I can see some cell density, then I'll, um, you know, transfer this to a larger culture container. Um, I'm just going to use what I've got here. Just got one milliliter at a time, and I think I'm just going to do um, actually just going to do uh, two milliliters of each of these um, in each of these to begin with. So make sure I'm doing this under the flame. Um, I'm actually going to avoid talking too much when I have lids open, so I don't breathe on it. So far I'm using all the same stuff, so I'm just reusing this pipette tip, but actually I just touched this one with my fingertip, so I'm going to discard that and get a new one here and draw that again. Luckily I've got a little extra. I'm going to be very careful about where your fingers and hands are when you're trying to keep things sterile. Okay, so I can just discard that now because it's pretty much empty. Got my tip waste over there. Got that. Okay, so I've got just two milliliters in the bottom of each of these. And the other thing I'm going to need to add in here is neomycin, um, which is the antibiotic, so that I know, um, you know, an extra barrier to contamination. Um, but I actually have that in a freezer over in the other room, so I'm going to go get that and I'll be right back. Just turn off the flame here. So unfortunately our freezer is broken in that room, so I'm just going to run down here to uh, another freezer where we're currently keeping my, our antibiotic stock. Got my neomycin. Ooh, oh, perfect. I forgot that neomycin is one of the few antibiotics that's actually stored in only water. So it actually freezes in the negative 20. A lot of the other antibiotics are stored in ethanol and they don't freeze, so they're ready right away. So I'll have to wait for this to thaw a little bit, but luckily I found one with just a small little amount in there, so it should thaw pretty quickly. So some, you can, as an alternative to selection with antibiotics, you can actually engineer organisms to be dependent on a particular nutrient so that it might not normally be dependent on. So a, a certain amino acid um, that you know normally the organism could produce on its own, uh, but you can knock out that gene and make it dependent so 
you know, it'll only grow in media that contains that nutrient. Keep this cold for a little while and then try to dig up my plate here. Great, okay. Um, so, here we go. Found my anabina plate with my little green colonies on there. I've got it wrapped up with uh, parafilm right now, which we use to seal the plates off. Um, help keep moisture in or out, or whichever way you think about it. Um, so this has actually got a lot of condensation built up in it. So I've got the plate here that I've, I've put the, the mixed culture on, um, where we, we saw that some of them had been successfully transformed. And these green colonies have formed, which indicates that, well, one, they were able to grow on this antibiotic plate, which means that these colonies should be those strains which were transformed. Um, and also, of course, they're green, so that assures us that it's anabina. Um, and other things shouldn't be able to grow on here anyway. Um, just because there's not enough nutrients. So, I've, I mean, I have plenty of colonies to choose from, it looks like, which is encouraging. So I'm just gonna pick a couple here that look easy to, to grab from, and I'm just gonna dot them beforehand so it's easier to see what I'm doing. Luckily, they're green, so that makes it a little easier to begin with, but um, kinda just gonna pick a couple randomly here that look pretty, look pretty healthy, that are separated from the others enough that it makes it easy to get in there because you don't want to you don't want to accidentally touch two colonies for example the ones that are really close because then you're not getting that monoclonal strain um, that has the single the single DNA set there there's definitely many ways to go about doing this but um, basically I'm gonna just go in with a pipette tip and try to swipe the colony up and then uh, you know pipette it down into the the medium here um, so we'll see if I can't grab these it's a little bit hard, and I'm trying to do it with minimal exposure to the air. Okay, there we go. So I've got, got the colony there on the tip of the pipette. Um, so I'm going to come in here and just dab it into the tube, which, well, I should keep it over here by the flame, but I'm going to dab that in, pipette up and down a couple times to make sure I got the green colony off the tip. And... So obviously I can't see it in here because it's pretty dilute, but I can tell it's not on there anymore. So succeeded at that. Dump that one, and then I'm going to do the next one. But before I do that, I'm going to grab a little ethanol so that I'm not cross-contaminating the colonies here. So wipe that off, wipe my hands off. Be careful of the flame with the ethanol. And then um, make sure I know where my next colony was going to be. So I had that one marked up here, which I picked. And then I've got another one over here that I marked, so make sure I can see that through the bottom here. So it's going to be this guy here, and I'm going to do the same thing. There we go. Not quite as clean, but still got cells on there. Again, this is why I'm inoculating such a small culture. If the space is too big, um, they won't grow as well if there's too much media. So usually you start out with a smaller volume, especially with something like these, these algae, which are more finicky. Uh, so I'm just going to clean this area up now. Uh, I'm going to reseal this with the parafilm, which I get over here. Cut some off. Doesn't take much. This stuff is really stretchy and pull it around the plate to seal everything off. Flip this back over. So these are both inoculated and I can just go, I'll just go stick these in the 30 degree incubator, which is the temperature at which this organism grows. It'll be shaking slowly at 30 degrees um, with constant light. Wait a week and a half or so to see some visible density in these small cultures and then I can think about, uh, you know, transferring it to a larger volume. So close that, got them, got them shaking kind of gently. Uh, it's a small volume so it'll actually shake less. E. coli, which, uh, you know, you can bake overnight, so to speak, like a loaf of bread, um, they'll grow to a very dense culture very quickly. Uh, but something like these algae, you know, it takes them 
a month or so to get them to this density from a colony, which is not really ideal to wait for uh, from a cryo stock. It's much easier to use this active stock um, and kind of uh, then, you know, waiting for the, the cheese to ferment. But, um, so I just keep them on the, the bench here, keep them in a bucket. They don't take up too much space and um, refresh the cultures every now and then uh, to keep them going and healthy.